Okay, uh, the uh, focus assessment by sonography and trauma, the FAST exam, is one of the earliest applications of bedside sonography that was widely investigated and established in our specialty and also in trauma uh, and uh, continues to be um, extremely useful, especially in blunt abdominal trauma um, and uh, um, in certain instances can be helpful in penetrating trauma as well. The, uh, the key concepts in the FAST exam are that we're actually not looking at organs because the, the FAST exam is positive or negative based on the presence of free fluid in abnormal locations. Um, so we're looking at potential spaces in the body where free fluid tends to accumulate. And uh, once that, that concept is, is clearly understood, then it's apparent that since it's a potential space, the entire extent of that potential space should be checked uh, for a full and complete evaluation. Now, just as a, a preview, there are going to be 10 potential spaces that we are going to evaluate, uh, and they are four in the right upper quadrant, one in the sub foot area, four in the left upper quadrant, and one in the suprapubic area. And the 10 potential spaces by name are in the right upper quadrant, we're gonna check the pleural space for hemothorax, we're gonna check the subphrenic space, we're going to check Morrison's pouch, which is the hepatorenal space. And then, really continuous with that, but just to make us think about it, is the inferior pole of the kidney looking for free fluid there, which might have trickled up from the colic gutter or drained down from Morrison's pouch if it's a small volume. In the subphrenic area, we're going to check the pericardial space. In the left upper quadrant, the same four spaces as we checked in the right upper quadrant will be checked. That will be the pleural space the subphrenic space, the splenorenal on the left, and the inferior, around the inferior pole of the left kidney. And finally, in the suprapubic area, we're going to check one space that's going to be the uh, rectovesical space in the male and the rectouterine space in the female, also known in the female as the pouch of Douglas. So uh, each of these spaces should be checked systematically in real time through all tissue planes to avoid overlooking small volumes of free fluid that have not completely filled the space. And I usually like to do it um, sequentially in the right upper quadrant from top to bottom. Uh, unless there's a serious con concern for, tr for pericardial trauma or cardiac trauma, uh, as in uh, significant frontal impact and motor vehicle injury without a seatbelt, um, pericardial and, and uh, uh, traumatic hemopericardium and peri pericardial effusion is very unusual in large series of the FAST exam. So the, the, uh, the most uh, high yield order to do this um, in every situation uh, is really to start with the right upper quadrant where the, the free fluid is most commonly found, then go to the pericardium, and then go to the left upper quadrant, and then go into the suprapubic area um, certainly one can go in any order one wants, but most of the time it's appropriate to go in the same order on every occasion so that uh, one, the, uh, by using a, an absolutely routine method, um, one doesn't uh, miss anything out or overlook anything. In the right upper quadrant, most of the time we have to use the intercostal window. And actually when we start the FAST exam, since, since speed is important here, we usually apply ultrasound gel in each of the, the four locations that we're going to be scanning uh, prior to starting so that we don't need to be um, concerned about that <coughs> during the exam. Uh, I, pref I think it's sensible to do the entire exam in real time and then obtain images later. Intercostal window right here, parallel with ribs, pro pointed to the head of the ribs, same as we used to, to the intercostal approach to the gallbladder. Uh, you usually need to have quite a lot of depth here. Make sure you have adequate gain uh, to see the deeper structures. And in order to check the pleural space, we're going to check back here for mirror artifact, which is the appearance of liver above the diaphragm with uh, new, uh, hemothorax or 
uh, plural effusions. This mirror artifact, this appearance of liver signal above the diaphragm goes away, and instead of that, there is uh, a black area here caused by the uh, free fluid in this location, none seen here. Next, we're going to check, and again, we're going to check through all the tissue planes. You can see me moving the probe here. Then we're going to check above the di sorry, below the diaphragm right here. Again, the same thing, scanning through all, liver plane, all tissue planes. Then we're going to move down and focus our eyes on, the, uh, on Morrison's pouch, which is the interface between the liver and the kidney. And again, I, I scan all the way through, through the kidney disappears completely medially here. And then I scan all the way through, trying to stay off rib spaces and all the way to the back. So I'm scanning all the way through this, from one side to the other. Uh, if there's any question, I can go transversely and scan right down along the kidney here to make sure there's no free fluid any location around the kidney out whatsoever. Uh, and this concludes the right upper quadrant exam. In the sub xiphoid area, uh, we use the same technique we did for sub xiphoid views of the heart by pr holding the probe mostly on the, on the top, pressing down firmly towards the floor, and, and uh, scanning through all the tissue planes from top to bottom here. And we were again assessing the pericardial space around here for free fluid. Uh, this requires a certain amount of pressure, and the heart's right behind the sternum, so the probe is almost parallel with the floor. If necessary, a longitudinal view like this, the uh, short axis view of the heart in the sub xiphoid region, can be used. As mentioned before, many of the, the trauma surgeons refer this, this view right here is the IVC coming up, hepatic veins draining into the heart, um, and right here we see the pericardial sac right here. And again, you can scan the entire extent of the heart like this. In the left upper quadrant, the same four spaces are going to be assessed as in the right upper quadrant. And first of all, we're going to assess the pleural space. Here's the diaphragm again. Uh, the pleural space shows the same mirror artifacts it did on the right with the, the appearance of the spleen above the diaphragm. And again, scanning systematically through all tissue planes to make sure that there's no area there where we, we appear to lose our mirror artifact. This, this, this uh, particular view is probably the hardest in the FAST exam. Um, and the mistake that most people make when they're learning uh, to do this is failing to put the probe far enough backwards. And you notice that my hand is almost touching the bed. This is characteristic for this view. And uh, they fail to put the probe far enough cephalad. Notice that the probe is up quite far towards the patient's axilla. The diaphragm is a much higher structure than people often realize until they start doing ultrasound. Yeah, this view is, tends to be more superficial. And oftentimes we can zoom in a little bit to make use of all our visual real estate on the screen. Uh, so once again, the four spaces that we're checking, uh, the pleural space, the subphrenic, the subdiaphragmatic space right in here on the inferior side of the diaphragm, the splenorenal space, which is right through here, um, which is the analog of Morrison's pouch. We need to try and stay off the ribs as we scan all the way through, through all the tissue planes. You can see that's what's happening right here. And if we go over another rib space, and you can see the, the image going dark there as we went over the rib, and we can check the inferior of the pole of the kidney right here. And we might need to go down one more rib space to really get to the inferior pole. Um, this is probably the best view that I'm able to get right here, but I think we can see that there's no fluid lying along here. Finally, the suprapubic um, assessment. Uh, in this assessment, one of the pitfalls is uh, using, uh, sorry, is, uh, uh, is having too much gain after the previous um, images it's re uh, with the, the bladder here. It's frequently necessary to decrease the gain, or otherwise free fluid back here gets, uh, tends to get blown away by the excess uh, echo, uh, the uh, exo excess uh, um, gain of, of the uh, of the previous exams um, because of the posterior acoustic enhancement created by the bladder. Uh, we go all the way down to the, in, the bottom of the bladder. Here we see the prostate around here. Continuing transverse, immediately above the prostate, we see initially this black structure that goes all the way across the midline. It's a fairly flat structure. And as we head further north, we see the two parts of that dividing. And these are the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles um, 
are actually in a very similar location to where free fluid would be on either side of the rectum here. This is the rectum down here. Um, and can be mistaken for small amounts of free fluid, but they're symmetrical and expected in the male. They join together in the midline here. Um, immediately superior to the seminal vesicles is really where the peritoneal reflection occurs. So the seminal vesicles are actually below the level of the peritoneal reflection, so technically it's impossible to have free fluid at this point uh, because it's, it's below where the peritoneum extends. As we go north here, we're looking for free fluid now here, and oftentimes it's small triangle, early, early, early signs of small triangular uh, pieces of dark fluid here, um, which is sometimes referred to as the bow tie sign because it appears like a bow tie on either side of the rectum. And we scan all the way up to the very dome of the bladder uh, for completeness. Uh, and, and by the way, right here we're seeing the psoas muscles and the external iliac vessels on the outside of the psoas muscles on both sides. Um, the psoas muscles uh, can sometimes be mistaken in the female for ovaries, um, especially since they have this, um, this sort of internal um, echoes here that, that, that give them a somewhat uh, um, ovarian appearance, um, although they're symmetrical and they're actually outside the pelvis. So um, uh, hopefully that shouldn't be a source of confusion. We go longitudinally. Uh, we can see down here the prostate um, and right here are the seminal vesicles in longitudinal view and really down here is where we're looking for the free fluid right above the seminal vesicles where the peritoneal reflection is and we scan systematically from side to side and maybe there's just a minute amount of physiological free fluid right there uh, as indicated right there and uh, um, it has the characteristic slightly pointy look um, uh, and uh, that we, we identify as free versus physiological fluid. Um, right here, this is shadowing caused by uh, stool and, and bowel gas. Uh, and that completes the uh, FAST exam. Uh, many occasions we uh, uh, continue with the extended FAST, uh, looking at the, for pneumothorax, um, and we'll discuss the, the uh, diagnosis of pneumothorax by ultrasound in a separate section.